What's up everyone and welcome back to TV Box Top, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. Today's video features a projector that's an all-in-one solution to your entertainment needs. This is the Vankyo Vista T4 and it's an ultra short throw 4K laser projector. We have seen a few of these on the market, but this one has a few tricks up its sleeve and includes a special bonus on the inside. So welcome to my very first short true 4K laser projector review and sit back and relax as I demonstrate its awesome features. So that begins right after this brief intro. So I'm back and let's take a look at what's in this purchase. So the bulk of this purchase and almost all of its weight is contributed to the Vista T4 model itself, making the total shipping weight around 72 pounds, so be mindful when you purchase. Also in this purchase, you get a special bonus of the latest Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K model, a Bluetooth remote, one 3-pin AC power cable, a lint-free lens cleaning cloth, a user manual, and a quick start guide. And now a look at some specs. It has a native resolution of 3840x2160p with 8.3 million pixels. It has a brightness of 2100 ANSI lumens, a contrast ratio of 3000 to 1. It has a true ratio of 0.233 to 1. Its display type is DLP and its light source is triple laser ALPD. It has a maximum display size of 150 inches. It's powered by Texas Instruments XPR technology. It has electronic focus, electronic 8-point corner keystone correction, smart eye protection motion detection warning. It has an Android operating system with AV1, Dolby Audio and DTS Audio video playback capabilities. Bluetooth connectivity, it has 3D display capability, and it has a pair of 60 watts internal speakers. And now we take a look at its design and connecting peripherals. This projector measures 21 and a quarter inches wide by 14 and three quarter inches long by four and a half inches tall. At the top, you have its laser projector lens, a pair of sensors, and its power button. At the front, you have the Vankio logo and the LED power light. And behind this fabric, you have the grill for its dual 60 watts internal speakers. To both sides, you have cooling vents consisting of four 80 mm cooling fans, two on each side. It also has a pair of adjustment wheels to adjust the height of its front legs individually for leveling. For IO, it has three HDMI ports, one of which is an HDMI ARC for output audio to AV receivers. It has one USB 2.0 port, one 3.5 mm audio output port, one 3.5 mm auxiliary port, one optical audio port, one Ethernet LAN port, and they didn't say if it's gigabit or not, and it's a DC power socket. And to its base has three anti-skid rubber feet, two of which can be adjusted with the side adjustment wheels, a pair of vents for the two 60 watts built-in subwoofers, and four screw holes for mounting to a ceiling. And with these holes, please ensure that your ceiling mount can support 24 pounds and over. So its startup process includes a Vankio splash screen, a first startup wizard, and then you're taken to its main menu. Once you complete the first startup wizard, from an off position, the startup process takes 19 seconds. So let's have a look at its main menu. So I've already connected to the internet and upon doing so, I am prompted with a firmware update. So I'll complete this update and continue. So the update was completed successfully and let's look at the features of its main menu. To the top of this menu, you have your source inputs and to the bottom, you have file management, which is a file browser to access files connected via its USB port. Once you connect to the internet, you can access its online manual. Under local applications, you can access apps installed on the system and I'll return to this in just a moment. 
You have its settings area and a help section containing Vanku's support and contact information. The settings area consists of image settings. This is where you can adjust its color and brightness from a selection of presets, or you can use your preferred custom color and brightness. Under Advanced Settings, you have MEMC 60Hz Motion Compensation Technology Options, ensuring all fast-paced content is delivered with super low image blur and latency rates. You have Dynamic Contrast. Color Temperature Settings, where you can select from presets or set your own red, green and blue levels. And you can reset all changes made in this section. You have light source settings where you can adjust the brightness of the laser lumens. Under Keystone Correction, you get 8-point digital corner keystone, horizontal and vertical keystone, and horizontal and vertical edge curving keystone, which is the most advanced keystone point to date. However, it does not have an auto keystone feature. You get electronic focus adjustment for the finest focus. However, it does not feature auto focus. And you have your projection mode for front projection, rear projection, front ceiling and rear ceiling projection. Under audio, you can change the audio mode from a selection of presets, but there are no custom audio settings for treble and bass. You can switch the audio output to optical audio, HDMI ARC or the headphone jack. If you are playing a video that has an audio lag, you can attempt to realign them by using the audio video sync feature. And you can reset all changes made to the audio settings. Under network settings is where you can connect to your Wi-Fi networks. You have your Bluetooth settings. Under personalization, you have your screen saver and key tone options. Under General, you have your boot up and shutdown settings. You can change its language between 10 various languages. Date and time settings. You can select whether to switch automatically between input sources when a device is connected. You have the option of an eye protection switch in the event you or a toddler or maybe a pet runs into the path of the laser, it will automatically switch off the display until you press the OK button on the remote. And in this section is where you will find your restore to factory default settings. Under about is where you will find your device info. You can change the device name. You can check for firmware updates. Check your storage information. View Vankio's terms and conditions. And there's a help section. And that's its system settings area. So I mentioned during the intro that it has some tricks up its sleeves. One of them is that its firmware is an Android operating system. It's not the full Android interface with a Google Play Store and Play Services, but it's a bare Android 9 operating system. Another is that with this operating system, you can connect USB controllers such as mouse and keyboards, and you can also pair them via Bluetooth and navigate the interface with a mouse cursor. The third is in the absence of a Google Play Store and Play Services, they have enabled the ability to sideload APKs via the file management browser. You can even install APK app stores. All installed APKs will be listed under the local apps section. If you are like me, you would find that this interface is very dull with its black background. Unfortunately, you cannot customize it or change its wallpaper in any form. Now, they included the latest Amazon Fire TV stick, but without connecting that, there are some things you can do with this Android system. For example, you can watch YouTube videos. However, if you try to install YouTube without Google Play services, it will not install. So what I did, I sideloaded the YouTube Smart TV version and it can play videos up to 4K 2160p resolution.
you can mirror your Android and iOS mobile phones using two apps I found in the app section, iMirror for Apple devices and Wi-Fi Display Sync for Android devices. However, when I tried to mirror my Android cell phone using the Wi-Fi Display Sync app, the projector crashes. So I sideloaded one of the alternatives and I successfully mirrored my Android cell phone. The original AirScreen app refuses to install via sideloading. So it came bundled with the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K, but for this review, I prefer to connect the Google Chromecast, which has HDCP 2.3 protection to see if it's compatible with this projector and plays videos with audio. So the Vista T4 is compatible with the Google Chromecast and it's also compatible with the included Fire Stick. When you open a video in the description, it shows that you get 4K HDR with Dolby Atmos and you will return it in healthy condition, alive. Do we have a volunteer? Also, when a device is connected via HDMI and you switch source inputs, if you press the settings button on the remote, you will get a pop-out menu to the right to adjust your settings in real time. So as you can see in this menu, you have options for 3D videos, HDR display, and HDMI 2.0 compatibility. So, I'll now fine-tune its brightness, focus, and color and play some 4K videos in various formats to view its optimal display quality. This is an AV1 video. This one is HDR10 Plus with Dolby Audio. And this one is Dolby Vision with Dolby Atmos. So 4K HDR10+, AV1 and Dolby Vision videos play on this projector without issues directly off of external storage. And while I'm at it, let's check all the various surround sound formats. This is Dolby Atmos. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object based. DTS HD Master Audio. This is Dolby Surround. Dolby True HD, but I don't see any Dolby indicators on the screen. This is the left channel. And this is DTS-X. So the Vista T4 is capable of playing most Dolby and DTS surround sound formats with the exception of Dolby True HD that played audio but did not trigger the Dolby feature. When connected to your PC or MacBook, this is the quality you get and the display details are outstanding. It gets even better with 3D gaming. With MEMC motion compensation technology, fast moving graphics on its large display are flicker free, smooth and easy to follow. So to conclude this review, I'll return to the local applications section to give an overview of its Android operating system and hardware information and what you can do in terms of performance. So the manufacturer of this main board is MediaTek and it's running on 3GB of DDR4 RAM and 32GB of internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its CPU is the MediaTek M7642. 
a quad core Cortex A73 processor clocked at 1.3 GHz configured in 32 bit mode. Its GPU is the Mali G52 with OpenGL 3.2. You get a dual band 5 GHz Wi Fi. Android 9 operating system and it's not rooted, please disregard this information that says yes. It has Vulkan support API version 1.1. Its operating temperature is 42 degrees Celsius. Under Codex, it has the most decoders I've seen. For 4K video, it has HAVC, VP9, Dolby Vision and AV1. For surround audio, it has DTS, DTS HD, AC3, AC4, and EAC3. So these are some really decent specs for what you are paying for. For digital rights, its DRM shows that it has Google Widevine Lover 3 only, and projectors don't need HDCP protection because there is no HDMI output. The Android operating system is not rooted. You can sideload Kodi and all your favorite movie streaming applications and watch movies directly on the projector with no need for an Android TV box. And here is a quick slideshow of its benchmarks. This speed test shows that its LAN port is not a gigabit LAN port. In measuring its fan noise, this projector has a variable fan speed controlled by a thermostat and its default fan noise is around 30 decibels, which is really quiet for a projector containing 4 cooling fans. For power consumption, when the fans are at the default speed, it consumes 308 watts of power. If the projector goes into eye protection mode, it drops to 112 watts. At highest fan speed, it could increase up to 360 watts. The included Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K is an added bonus and it only adds value to your purchase, but as seen in the video, it's not the only streaming device you can use as any Android box, desktop, mini PC, laptop or notebook will work. I did not see the need to connect surround sound speakers because its internal speakers are so powerful it sounds as powerful as my AV receiver. In summary, there is no disputing that if you have this projector in your possession, there is no need for a flat screen TV. Its triple laser display quality is next level and there is no 4K or regular projector that can compare. I just mentioned the power of its internal speakers and I was not exaggerating, it's that good. My only wish for this unit is that they used a full Android operating system with Google Play Store and Play Services, with Netflix ESN certification and DRM to stream official movie streaming services in HD and 4K without the need to connect a Fire Stick or other streaming device. Due to its price, this projector is definitely not for everyone, but if you are looking for a projector that can give you 150 inches display at the same quality seen in this video, where I only used a fraction of its huge display size, then this projector is going to be worth the investment. So that brings to an end my review. Thanks for watching, give this video the thumbs up to show your continued support. Your participation and comments have resulted in high ticket products such as this one being sent for review, so I sincerely appreciate your support. If you are watching one of my videos for the first time, I only ask before you leave that you click the subscribe button and ring the notifications bell to be notified each time I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Stay connected and see you in the next video.